Hi guys, Adam here as per usual. How are we all doing? In this quick video, what I want to do is show you a little bit about programming the GSC4, the G-Lab GSC4 guitar system controller. I've done a couple of other videos talking about this product, showing you a couple of the features, etc. We're going to explore more into it as well. What we're going to do is very quickly show you how to program a sort of um, patch, if you like, that's going to operate your pedal board, your amp, your rack, all of your effects via MIDI and via relay switching, etc. So come join me on the floor and we'll take a quick look at that. Alright guys, so here we are then. Sorry for the bit uncomfortable angle and the fact it's a bit dark. Very, very simple. So here, what these buttons do, these are your sort of end um, controls, up, down, left, right, OK, menu, etc. You'll see here that it says locked so you can't edit it. This is so idiots can't muck about with your buttons while you're gigging or whatever, I guess. So all you need to do is hold down the left and right key simultaneously and that'll switch from locked to unlocked. See, press both those buttons to go and unlock. So let's edit a patch. So we're going to edit patch zero, all right? Why? Because why not? So first of all, you press OK and that kind of goes on. Now this is the different kind of foot switch types, what the foot switches do. So you can have the foot switches uh, to toggle between presets for this, switch modifiers, loop modifiers, or MIDI modifiers. We'll go into those in more detail in a future video and as kind of more advanced programming and routing video, but we're gonna stick with preset, which is what most people are gonna be using this for today. Now in here, what you can do is you can change the sort of name of the bank, um, and we're just going to leave it a general mix, which is my sort of uh, playing at home kind of bank of presets, if you like. And then here we change the name. This is the only thing. I kind of wish the keyboard was touch screen because pressing these buttons is a bit of a pain in the arse. So let's call it, I don't know, sound one with a dollar sign because why not? Press save. So that's what we're going to call it, all right? Now, what you got down here, flashing here, this B, this stands for buffer. So this has a really high quality, really awesome buffer. I'm finding on the majority of me kind of patches and settings, I'm leaving the buffer on. We'll do some audio examples and stuff in a future video when I come to demonstrate my board, etc. And the, the sort of sound quality of the buffer will really shine through. It's awesome. So let's say for this patch, we want the buffer on. The next is your kind of loop selection. So you've got six loops. These are where you put your pedals in or chains of pedals. I've only got four pedals in loops on the board. In loop one, I have the Iron Tone Crank Combo. Loop two, the Amplified Nation Big Bloom. Loop three, the Mark L Jazzy Drive. And loop four, the BB Preamp MB. So this is going to be a nice kind of um, lead sound. We want a really smooth lead sound. So what I might do is I think we're going to have loop two, which is the Amplified Nation Big Bloom. We're going to have that switched on. And we're going to put the BB preamp on as well, which I've got set for a mid boost and to cut the kind of lows and the treble. That's going to give us a nice fat sing and sustain sound. Switch. These are your kind of switches. So as well as six switch outputs, you can use these for a variety of things. I haven't got them hooked up to anything on my board. You could use it to toggle between channels on an amp for amps that aren't MIDI set up. You can also use them to go into something like an RGM amp gizmo so that you can control your amp and toggle certain effects on and off, that kind of thing. Visit that in a future video. And so that's ignoring the switch. Now down these, down the bottom here, this is your MIDI device. You can control up to 10 MIDI devices from this unit. I've already got these MIDI devices pre-assigned and pre-set up. Again, we will do that in a future video. I'll show you how to do that. But let's have a look. So in loop one, I've got the Digitech valve effects, all right? So I want to send that to program seven on the valve effects, which is kind of, I know I've got that set up for a, a sort of compressed and delayed sound. So that sends that to channel seven. Number two is the TC Electronic D2. I want to put that on program number two because I know that program number two on the D2 I've got set up was like a 2290 style kind of fading digital delay. Number three, this is the Lexicon MPX, which I've actually taken out of the rack so I can get rid of that at the moment, so we're not running that. And loop four, the, uh, sorry, MIDI channel four, this is the channel that I've got the Hughes and Kettner Trilogy, me amp, set up to receive MIDI signals, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that to, try and think off the top of your head, Adam, I think changing that to patch seven gives me the ultra channel 
with the effects loop on. So that's kind of going to be our sound, all right? Now all we do to save it is we press escape and that's saved, done, all right? So we can switch to bank nine where I've got nothing saved there and that goes off and then when we switch to zero, it's very quickly, it's very, very low latency zero and that switches to our new sound with the dollar sign you can see the loops that are brought in and out the buffer that's on there uh, and the midi and when these uh, basically when these are red it's showing that it's active or it's doing something it's sending some information somewhere so let's show us an example where's one where i haven't got much going on let's have a look um here we go <laughs> the angry rhino sound i'll have to show you that when i come to demo and um, the pedal board it's a fat octavy screaming kind of fuzz sound so we've got that and you can see here on this channel we're sending information through midi channels one two and four so changing all of the racks and the amps we've got the buffer on and we've got loop one on which is the crank combo so we're doing all that information and then when we switch to our new patch patch zero you can see that the buffer stays on loop one's gone off and it's been replaced by loop two and four and midi information again is being sent out on one two and four there's times when you might not want to change the channel on your amp um, if you're only using a couple of presets but for the sake of 10 seconds of extra programming I like to just make sure that that MIDI information is always being sent out so that I'm always going to go to the right channel and that everything I know is going to be exactly as I want all right guys so i hope you found that useful a really quick sort of little um snippet of how to program the gsc4 in basic detail it's very very easy to do in future videos we're going to go through some of the more in-depth advanced programming and routing options in there how to set up new midi devices and new controllable devices all in the gsc4 we'll do that in future videos i hope you continue to have a good week i'll see you on friday when we're going to do another lesson video of some kind until next time Take it easy and as ever, post your comments and suggestions down below. And if there's anything specific you want to see me do with the GSE4, please let me know. There's audio clips, audio samples, etc. coming with my new rig in the very near future. Take it easy.